Hello, uh, welcome to a tutorial about Coppelia Sim or formerly known as uh, VREP. This is an introduction video in which I will explain how uh, VREP works, a uh, brief introduction about it. Okay, I'm Leopoldo Armesto, I'm a senior lecturer at the Universitat Politecnica de Valencia and uh, these videos uh, correspond uh, to a set of uh, videos in which I will introduce this software and they are part of the uh, robotic courses I teach in, uh, in the university. So, uh, the aim of the, the, the video, in this particular video, is to introduce uh, Coppelisim, or as I said before, formerly known as VREP. It's a robotic simulator, actually it's a very good uh, simulator that can sim uh, simulate any type of robot and it has a lot of tools that makes uh, simulations a lot of easier. So, the idea is to show, briefly show some of the capabilities and for a first time user uh, then I will just show how the user interface works and also uh, mostly how to move uh, the camera to, to display different uh, objects in my scene, how to pan, rotate and zoom, also how to add objects to, to my scene and I will explain about uh, the model browser and the uh, scene uh, hierarchy and also I will show, briefly show how to uh, see different uh, simulation pages for, in order to have different views and uh, briefly explain about the physics engine library which is one of the com key components of the, of the software. In order to follow this course, uh, you or I assume that you have some previous knowledge, particularly in programming, because uh, later on uh, we will see some videos about uh, programming a robot. And uh, in the free educational version of Copelisim, uh, uses a language which is which is called Lua. It's let's say not not so popular language, uh, not least as many other uh, uh, or popular languages like uh, Python but it's easy and quite flexible. So, this is the, the free version, the educational version of this software and also I assume that you have some basic concepts about robotic system. Uh, if there's uh, the need of explaining something in particular, I will, I will do that uh, along the videos, okay, so don't worry about that. And uh, if, you, if you have some uh, knowledge about 3D simulation softwares, uh, basically to understand uh, uh, geometries, 3D shapes and how these simulation software works in order to uh, uh, run uh, dynamic properties of them and so on, this is usually quite recommended, but yeah, we will see all, all details. Okay, so let's modify, uh, let's, let's move to the software and um, this is uh, Copelli Sim and um, this is uh, the default uh, scene uh, as we can see. And here we can see obviously some uh, menus and some icons here on the top that will be commonly used for us and also some icons here uh, on, the, on the left that we will use uh, for different purposes, okay? So we will see some of them, okay? So first thing is uh, these three icons here will allow us to modify the way we interact with the view here. So the first one which is selected by default is the pan, so we, I can pan my view, so I can shift it if I click or I can rotate my view, okay? This is uh, also I can do a zoom out or zoom in, okay? And uh, here uh, we can add, for instance, let's say for first time we will add a cuboid by default, let's create a default cuboid here in the middle of the scene. And as you can see here, uh, what I have right now, it's a cuboid and I can focus on it just by clicking on this icon here, okay? So I fit my view to be closer to that object, that, that particular object, okay? So, now let's see uh, what we have here on the, on the left. We have a model browser and we have a scene. The model browser is basically a library with folders in which we have a lot of a lot of components that we will be use they will be used by default uh, or they will be used in our uh, simulations and by default we will have this view here in which we have uh, this one selected. 
And as you can see, we have a folder with robots and non-mobile robots, basically our ARM robots, and we have a lot of existing models with robots uh, uh, provided by manufacturers or users. So let's say we want to create or add a new model to our scene, so we just simply need to modify, uh, add, uh, drag it there, and we can fit the view. So there's our uh, new uh, object, and as you can see here in the scene, we have the cuboid, which is not visible right now because it's small and uh, it's hidden by the, the robot arm, and we have the robot arm. We also have a quite huge variety of mobile robots, as you can see here, you can play with them, all of them are mostly ready to use, so yeah, you can uh, try to investigate how to, how to use them. And also, we have other, um, other uh, objects that we can use, for instance, to decorate our uh, scenario. Okay, and this is, for instance, a plant or we can use uh, another one which will be a person there, okay, and uh, we can have even uh, other, other things like, for instance, walls of different heights, this is convenient if we work with mobile robots, moving on environment, a maze, something like that, okay, and all these objects, as you can see here, have been added into the scene. The scene uh, represents basically the list of objects that will be used in our simulation, and as you can see, by default there are some objects already created for you, but all the objects I have created has, have been appeared here in the, in the scene. And the most important thing about the scenes, uh, or the objects, uh, and we will see that into detail, is that they can have a different, uh, or there's a hierarchy on the objects on the scene, so if you click here on the plus sign, you deploy or expand the full hierarchy and you have different objects, you can see here, yeah, and for instance in this case what we have, this is the root node or the, the, the root object which is the parent and it has one single child, in that case another object, and it has another child, and it has another child, and this one has three childs, and this one has additional childs and so on, so there's like a tree, having a lot of uh, uh, objects, and the important thing here is that they, uh, a parent can, can affect how the child behaves, okay? So, uh, for now that's enough, and uh, let's also uh, see how, for instance, this cuboid here, which is hidden right now by the robot, we can modify the position of the, of the, of the objects by clicking here, and we have this translation a, a dialog in which we can modify the x and y position, so if we just right click right somewhere on the, on the scene, we will see that we can move the object, okay? We can also do it uh, along, for instance, a specific direction like z, okay? And we can also rotate the objects, for instance, we can select the robot and rotate it, as you can see here, depending on the axis we select, and uh, then we can also uh, set the properties for our simulation, and in particular this is using the bullet library, uh, which is what I recommend for by default, so I don't recommend to modify these uh, things unless you know what you're doing, but as a simulation uh, engine, what it's in charge of moving all the objects on, on our scene and trying to detect all the collisions and react against each other, each of the objects, okay? So we will see that in detail later. Okay, so for instance, if we run the simulation, we have here the play button, and we have the person that was moving around uh, the scenario, okay? We can pause it, and we can stop it, okay? And finally, what we can do is to change the view of my uh, uh, scene, so if I select this, I have this uh, normal view, but I can have also a top view here, which might be useful for some purposes, okay? And uh, yeah, okay, so let's return back. Okay, so in this uh, presentation I have briefly introduced how to use VREP and some of the capabilities. Thank you very much.